Welcome to the Starting Monday Podcast. The podcast for anyone who has a habit of delaying their health and fitness goals, who struggles to build consistency, or just doesn't know where to start. Have you ever said the phrase, I'll start Monday? If so, this is the podcast for you. Now, let's welcome the hosts, experienced personal trainers, and all-around good guys, Barry Steven and Matthew Percival. Hey guys, welcome back to Starting Monday Podcast. I am Barry Stephen and I'm here with Matthew Percival and today we are hopefully going to speak to you guys a little bit about some common gym myths and maybe bust a few of them. Hopefully, yeah. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, we'll do our best. But first up, Matthew, <clears throat> not seen you for a wee while. Yeah, we've been, what, two weeks? I think it's been two weeks. We did promise we'd do one every week, but just... Uh... Um, we're so busy <laughs> and preoccupied. As per usual, we're a wee bit behind. Busy lives, busy lives. Busy guys. What are you saying, Dick? What have you been up to? I see you've been away on holiday. Yeah, I was in Portugal, in Lisbon, with three of uh, my friends. Your three friends? Yeah, three great guys. And we went around just seeing the spots, you know, having a couple of drinks, having a good time. It was good, really good. Cultural, very cultural trip. Was the weather good? The weather was amazing. It was like 28, 29 degrees. And to be fair, for the first time ever, I think I acclimatized to the heat. It's not like me. If you know me, I have ginger hair. I burn very easily. And I'm not a big fan of the of what? the heat. But I went I came back and I was like, what, what's this about? What factor? Uh I, to be fair, I didn't wear a factor for about a day or two. Come on, man. And that's then not I, good for you. I put some factor fifty on after that, you know. You gotta look after your Yeah, I was, your skin. Bit, I was looking a bit pinky, as my dad would say, a little bit pinky person. You gotta go go look after myself. Oh, well, You've been away as well though. I've haven't been you? away, yeah. I've been away. I've been well, I haven't been away. For as long as you, I've only been in London, but I was down in London for yeah, a couple yeah. a couple of days with a couple of pals, and uh, yeah, no, it was good Great fun. Time. Yeah, it was good. Um, we went to see. We, we go every year, myself and my two, my two my two mates, my only two mates. <laughs> yeah, two two of my mates. No, just my two Aye, mates. Two of my mates. Uh, both both called Andy, so that makes it a little That's bit, a bit confusing. A little yeah. bit confusing for me, but um, yeah, we we pick a Premiership game every year and basically go and watch a random game. Yeah. Uh, and you thought, you know what? It's time to see the best team in the Premier League play. Yeah, and lose. So you went and saw West Ham lose to Crystal Palace. Well, you've been banging on about West Ham ever since we became friends, uh, and quite frankly, I'm not quite sure why. But <laughs> we're in it for the vibes. We're in it for the vibes. Nah, so, a great team. So vibes. went down and seen uh, Crystal Palace versus West Ham. It was it was it was four three for anyone that doesn't follow football which, which is a good game which it's is an exciting goal. game ah, it was brilliant it was really, it's better really than good. a 1-0 when you sit there and watch one goal for 90 minutes absolutely well it wasn't that long ago uh, Crystal Palace were struggling to score a goal so we were pretty pleased to see seven goals and yeah yeah London London's brilliant good time you like London good time you? I love London yeah yeah I go down quite a lot so yeah, yeah good place loads to do anyway guys we're going to start this podcast and the next few podcasts with a question I'm going to hit Matthew a question he's going to hit me with a question all right and he doesn't know my question I don't know your question he's lying it's written on the whiteboard <laughs> <laughs> I know his question <laughs> okay but go on the, Barry ask me next ask week me. next week you're not going to okay, know I my question next week, I won't know all right next week. only next week right Matthew if you were on death row okay which, yeah yeah it's a possibility I'd have to move to America but yeah it's a possibility still a possibility still a possibility yeah absolutely what would be your last meal I actually have an answer to this question. Before oh, I even knew what the question was, I had an answer. And it's a weird one, to be fair. I'd have fish and chips. Okay. Simple. Nice what's, meal. What's weird about that? Everyone, like, you know, you just have something fancy, you know? But nah. no, fish and chips is like my... See, after football, when I was a kid, occasionally my dad would get me a fish and chips. You know, yeah. everyone else would go to <clears throat> McDonald's and all that. So I've never got that. Never. But occasionally I got fish and chips. And it's like my, my nice meal, you know? I enjoy it. So is, is, a, is a fish supper your favorite takeaway? 100%. So, I don't often get it, but it's 100% my favourite. Well, you don't often get a takeaway or you don't often get fish and chips? Uh, I don't often get fish and chips. <laughs> it's your favourite? <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's pretty filthy, isn't it? It's, it's high fat content there. It's a lot of fat. What's well, a little burrito here and there is not that bad deal. I, I love a fish supper as well, but I, I, I grew up liking a pie supper. I don't know, I don't know if anyone else likes I've, a pie I've supper. I've never even had one. You've never had a pie I've supper? I've never had a pie supper. Men's Actually, pie from maybe. the... Maybe, chip shop. maybe at lunchtime when I was a kid. Maybe, but I'd never get one. A pie supper. Yeah, pie supper. What, what pie are you going for? Mince or steak. Fair. Yeah. Would you get one now? Nah, probably not. Okay. I'd, I'd prefer a fish what's supper. Your, what's your death row meal then? What are you going for? 
My death row meal would be well. I'd have a starter. Yeah, it's what I mean. People, people go all in. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I really do like spicy chicken wings. So you know, I'd have to have that as a starter. That's your star, spicy chicken wings. Yeah, like it, uh, with nice. some sort of like, you know, buffalo sauce or something. Like a, like a blue cheese sauce or something, I'd dip it in. A, a wee blue cheese sauce on the side, dip it in. Ah, that's nice, celery. you're selling me. To, to cool the mouth down. You know? Yeah, yeah. What else? Main. It's not going to be healthy, by the way. Is that okay? You're way to die, Barry. It's all yeah. right. <clears throat> you're not scared. worried about your body fat percentage at this point. <laughs> uh, full Scottish breakfast. Full right, well, what's the difference between a Scottish breakfast and an English breakfast? There's a few differences, mate. There's, actually, there's only one. Well, there can be two. No, there's more than one. Go on then. Black pudding. Black pudding is, originates in Berry in England. Interesting. Go on. But it's never an English breakfast. Yeah, it is. It's in every English breakfast. Look it up. It wasn't in the one I had down in London. Maybe they, maybe they gave you a London breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is- to be fair, this is so off topic, but black pudding is disputed that either originated in England and Scotland. There's a dispute there. Is this going to be our topic? Yeah, go on. And then what else? Tatty scone. Tatty scone's correct. Yeah, 100%. I'm not having any of your hash browns or bubble and squeak or whatever that sort of well, stuff. Well, I feel attacked. Yeah, so I Tatty's like a hash brown. And, and don't even say this is in your English breakfast because it isn't haggis. Well, yeah, but you, you don't get that in every Scottish breakfast, do you? Yeah, you do. You get yeah. that in like a four or five star hotel Scottish breakfast, don't you? A little bit of haggis. Been a few four or five star hotels. Yeah, bet, 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 bet. <clears throat> You're going to have a dessert as well or you just done after that? Breakfast done. I'm not a big dessert person, to be honest with you, but I would probably have a dessert, yeah, cheesecake, throw it in. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're getting three courses, I'm already dead. Yeah, it was my <laughs> question, it was my, my question, course. was it? Yeah. So what, what's your question, Matthew? Well, I'm going to keep it a bit more fitness related today, Barry. Uh, what is your least favourite exercise? My least favourite exercise? And I probably know the answer. Well, it, it would be a, a lower body exercise, that's, that's, for, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I should probably say calf raises since I never do them. And don't really have yeah, the well, best. Would of you calves. hate them though? But or no. just put them off? No, I lunges. I, I love it. It's like marmite. I love and hate them. But I would say lunges are Bulgarian split squats, and I think a lot of people. So basically, would anything say that. single leg, lower body, we hate. Yeah, anything it's with pretty a, brutal. Anything with a balance element to it, like split squats and legs and and holding weights. Yeah, it's a brutal exercise. But I, I do love them as well. Yeah, yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Bulgarians would be my least favourite, but yeah, again, as you said, they're a good exercise, aren't they? A really good yeah. exercise. Good bang for your buck, but they're a thought. We're always going for the same things. I know. It's not good. Common consensus. Right, let's let's get on with it, mate. Gym myths. Okay, number one. Um, spot reducing body fat from a certain area. So like, you know, a lot of people will, will say, I want to tone my stomach or I want to tone my sides or I want to lose body fat from my triceps like what can i do for this part yeah, i'll what train my tricep part? or i'll do some core exercises to lose always get asked fat. these questions and um you know how do we answer them Man. how do we answer them uh it's a tough one to be fair because obviously there's giving people what they want isn't there so you don't want to <clears throat> not give right, so you a mean customer like, what they request yeah you yes, know what i mean yeah but yeah. you try and coach them and probably say that's not going to work like that a good way to, to to sort of explain it is this is like think of a swimming pool full of water right yeah if you take out a bucket of water from the right hand corner of the swimming pool it's basically going to bring the overall water level down isn't it i quite like this this is good <laughs> this is good he's he's pulling this one out of the hat it's not it's not going to change anything to that corner right yeah and that's kind of like what what it's like for our body um we can't specifically target certain areas of our body no but what we can do is lose overall body fat which our body are in, t- in time are We'll lose it from probably yeah, yeah. all different areas. Your of body. body will pick it from wherever the hell it wants. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, and yeah. no matter if you go, oh, body, take it from my belly. Your body might go. You know what? I need some more energy. I'll take the fat from my leg. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you, yeah. You, yeah, you can't spot reduce. It's impossible. A lot of the time, it will come off the. I don't know if this is scientific, but a lot of the time, it'll come off the areas that you're carrying the most weight. In. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, if you're carrying a lot of weight in, around your gut or your hips usually like, you'll yeah, probably your see the gravity, biggest right? amount of progress there right yeah your center of gravity where you store most body fat so yeah men yeah. it's usually like a little yeah. bit higher belly and then women usually around the hip area you're going to start reducing yeah so i think we're saying is like don't waste time doing hundreds and hundreds of crunches in the hope that it's going to help reduce the body fat around your stomach because you're wasting, sort of wasting your time you should just be focusing on your overall 
program, getting a lot of different exercises in there, working your whole body as a whole, and of course, making sure that your diet is in line with what you're trying to achieve. You're in a Spot calorie on, deficit. Yeah. And patience. Yeah, patience. And just don't worry about it. Just enjoy the process, right? Just yeah. Enjoy the process. So don't try and spot reduce fat. It's not going to happen. But keep working at it. Keep pushing. Keep striving. Yeah, but I get, what, down. I get what you're saying, Matthew, about, you know, working with people and, you know, you know, putting in a few exercises for a specific area. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe to... Yeah, you don't want to say someone right to their face, that's complete garbage, I'm not doing that. No, but, <laughs> do no, but sometimes... Yeah, okay, well, we can do a bit of that. Yeah, of course we can. Do a bit more core work, we can do a bit more of that. But yeah, it's impossible to do. So uh, it's a gym myth, you do hear it quite a lot these days, don't you? Yeah. Still. Yeah, you can develop muscles though. So like, you know, if if you want to develop the muscle in your arm, for example, the back of your arm. You yeah, yeah. Training that area is obviously going to help develop. Of course, that muscle. get more blood flow. It might, it might, it might tense up because like the muscles got more blood in it, etc. So yeah, like a pump. You know what I mean? Um, so it's a good one. Uh, what we've got next? Squats are bad for your knees. Okay, it's a good one. It's a good one to be fair. Because when I first got into coaching, you heard this quite a lot, mm-hmm. especially at, um, the knees over the toes. People used to say you can't put your knees over your toes because it's bad for your knees. Is yeah. that true, Barry? <clears throat> no, because. If if you don't allow your knees to track over your toes and you want to do a good squat, you're going to have to find the, the mobility from somewhere else. So it's going to come from basically your hips. And, and what's going to happen is because you're not allowing your knees to go forward, you're not, you're not utilizing any of the mobility at your ankle. So therefore, you're going to basically hinge forward. So, inst- yeah. so you might be saving your knees or you think you're saving your knees, but then you're, you're putting all that stress back onto your lower back yeah, yeah. all right because your squat's got no balance yeah um and you've you've not really got a good center of gravity the bar's not got a good center of gravity if if we're referring to back squats that is um but you know there isn't there isn't a really great deal of evidence out there that i've that i can see anyway yeah. that suggests that knees over toes is is bad for you as long as um, your squats like a you got a good squat a good movement pattern and you're going to a range that you're able to to do and control, then you're yeah. good, right? So you see like Olympic weightlifters who catch the bar in really deep squat positions. Yeah. They're extremely mobile and extremely strong in those positions as well. So they're able to. So if you're if you're interested by it, if you go look up like an Olympic weightlifter, probably the best, right? They are, they do really deep squats and you'll see their knees usually track over their toes in those positions. Yeah. And I, th- I think when you're squatting, the most important thing always for me is balance and maintaining balance. Let your let your joints move as they should move. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't um, restrict them. No, not at all. Um, so and you, you'll have better posture. You'll you'll get better depth. It, I mean, if you if you have sore knees and you you have bad knees and um, you know maybe adapting your squat or maybe choosing a different exercise might be the way to go but yeah, for the majority of us investing in support as well for the for the majority of us it's not something that we should be, be be worrying about keeping your heels flat on the floor is 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 more important yeah so if yeah, if, yeah. if your knees going forward means that your heels come up you're going too low yeah you've lost your balance your posture's not right there's probably a bit of strain on the knees there but if your heels are in contact with the ground then loading through your foot properly yeah you're all good yeah you got good balance you got good good loading you got a good center of gravity then you've got a safe squat and spot if, on if you don't let your knees track forward you're not actually going to get um good depth yeah in, in your squat but then i wear knee sleeves i i like them they kind of help me a little bit my knees get a bit sore sometimes but i do a lot of lower body stuff so I, knee sleeves help me a lot i think so you can invest in a pair of those you love your knee sleeves i do you? love my knee sleeves my favorite yeah. bit of kit favorite bit yeah i think i think we've covered that one there yeah, yeah. Let, your knees, let your knees track forward it's all good what have we got next barry what's number three what have we got what have we got next well lifting makes you bulky if you're a woman yeah it's a good one i mean we both train a lot of women don't we yeah 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 probably predominantly yeah you train more women than men uh probably just mm-hmm. just yeah percentage wise probably just yeah I would say we have more women come to this gym than we do men. So and 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 we train, we we do strength based movements in all our programs on a daily basis. So it it's for me it's it's highly unlikely that we're going to make an average 
person, uh, uh, the, yeah, uh, your average some woman, sort of bodybuilder, um, bulky, yeah, who's training two to three, maybe four times a week, doing full body routines, um, mix with a mixture of cardiovascular training, following a healthy, balanced diet, and just generally looking after their health. I've, it's it's not likely that yeah they're going to get bulky that you're going to get bulky. Men, for for example, men have got on average twenty times more. Yeah, probably some of that. Than, yeah, than women. quite high. Yeah. yeah, a lot higher. And as as men, we find it difficult to yeah to build muscle mass, to, to hard build work. Muscle. So I really f- think it's highly unlikely that 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 a woman or the, your average woman. There, I mean, there is some. Except- I think they just sections. overthink it, and obviously they compare themselves to like your your top end bodybuilders and things like that, who are probably taking a lot of stuff as well you know what yeah. i mean and they're not realizing that and thinking oh, the, oh you can get that size naturally it's not going to happen it's not going to happen i mean i think if if, if you are a, a woman and you're training five six times a week you know and you're following a program that is you know really going to stimulate uh, muscle, muscle growth, mass yeah. and you are nutrition wise on top of it with your nutrition eating excess calories and you're being very consistent I'm pretty sure that you probably are going to build. Yeah, you probably build will. Muscle, yeah, yeah. build well, build size and muscle and body fat and get bigger and get bulkier. But uh, you know, and if that's your goal, great. But I think for most 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 people, if people, you're doing a bit of weights, you probably tone up a bit of muscle mass, but nothing crazy, and probably yeah, yeah. enjoy and, your physique. Yeah, and look look fantastic. And and introducing strength t- training and and weight based exercise into uh, a women's program is, is i would i would look upon it as a positive thing um yeah know. rather than a negative yeah 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 and, massively so and it and, and it maybe means you don't have to do as much cardiovascular training you can get a better balance between strength work and cardiovascular yeah. training and it's good for overall life isn't it you're probably sure you train a, a few more like older demographics and you see the big difference with these like older especially women who can then yeah be a bit stronger and manage like day-to-day life even better it's a good thing really well, good thing. absolutely as we're getting older we are are naturally we're getting we're losing our muscle mass we're losing our strength we're losing our balance you know i don't know at what rate but you know these things are all on a sort of downward spiral yeah we haven't looked up the exact rate <laughs> <laughs> we're not but that, yeah, you we're not do, that yeah. scientific no, are we not. um but through Training and, uh, you know, weight training and, and the training that we do with our clients, Matthew, you know, we can hopefully, um, st- you know, stop yeah. that, stop that yeah, trend. Yeah, of course. You know? I train my mum, actually. You do? I do. I train my mum. Yeah, yeah. She was fantastic. You train her in the gym? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She follows me everywhere I go. <laughs> Genuinely. I got, I got a new job. She, she joined the gym. Was um, it, was it yeah. like training your mum? Because um, I think... If, if I was training my mum, I'm pretty sure we would fall out. <laughs> no, it's fine. My mum, um, a bit of backstory to kind of sum up. My mum's not very competitive. She grew up, she she can't, she was never taught how to ride a bike. And um, she she couldn't swim either. She didn't learn to swim. So she was never been competitive. She'd never been sporty. But her in the gym, she kind of got into it quite a lot after she got hip surgery. And she's um, she's managed to sort of like enjoy getting stronger and yeah, yeah she made a big big change compared to my first start trainer she no no offense to her she couldn't really do much <laughs> so have you have you got your mum squat deadlifting and benching my mum she's got um she has osteoarthritis at her hips um and her knees aren't great either these days so she deadlifts barbell deadlifts these days mm-hmm. yeah yeah she can do that um she does like barbell press-ups etc and she squats but usually lighter like trx based squats and bodyweight lunges etc so brilliant and does she enjoy fantastic. it she loves it she does it all yeah, the time good, three days good. a week three days a week superb right Next no one's pain good, yeah. no gain i know we've covered this but we'd like to just go over things don't we yeah Re- revisit i saw a really interesting study actually recently into like um weight training but like your five reps in reserve sort of training and actually like muscle mass between that and for example someone who's beasting themselves going to fail all the time and actually because the person with five reps in reserve was able to do more without fatiguing themselves mm-hmm. they actually had equal muscle mass gain so there's no real need to destroy yourself in order to gain some muscle mass well, it has its place right you can do it now and again but not all the time i quite like to do the 10 rep- reps in reserve <laughs> do you yeah yeah no the chilled out training yeah, but like pain, I have this week, but pain is bad. If someone, I got, for example, people come to you in the gym sometimes, they're like, "Oh, I'm feeling a lot of pain in my knee when I'm doing blah blah blah." You go, "Well, if you're feeling actual sharp pain, don't do it. If your muscles are sore, 
fantastic keep going but pain's quite bad isn't it yeah it's all that tri- you know comes back to training optimally and not actually yeah yeah and know, being smart and then, then you've got to beat yourself all the time yeah but knowing when you need to as well, you know, if, you, if you're if you peaking in a block or you're trying to push yourself at the end of a program, fine. But if you're doing it, start of a program, it's not a good idea, is it? Yeah. It's not a good idea. Yeah. What about... Oh, this is good. <laughs> I'll get a PT when I'm fit or I'll come and see you, Matthew, once I've got myself a little bit fitter and in shape. If, if you're listening and you've ever said this to me, to a PT. To me or Matthew or <laughs> any other personal trainer... I, I'm trying to figure out, like... It's a bad one. How does that even work? That's like... Yeah, yeah. It's our like, job. Like the, the best way to put it, it's our job to make you fit and improve you. Like, yeah. that's our job. Yeah. So to, to think like, oh, I'll get it when I'm fit, you know? <laughs> what, what, what do you want us to do then? <laughs> I, was, I was trying to come up with, like, an example or analogy that kind of reflected this. and, and I, 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 I liked it. I liked it. Do you think, do you like yeah, it? it was a good one. Yeah, go on. I was like, you know... You know, my van's broken down, but I'll, I'll I'll take it to the mechanic once it's better. Once yeah, when I've fixed, fixed it. When I've fixed it. It's, it's like, so it stupid. doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? I, yeah. So that's how I feel about that, about that, to be honest with you. But I think I think if you dig a bit deeper, that's probably just people feeling a bit insecure and a bit concerned. Yeah. And that's, that goes back to that episode we did about g- the gym fear. I just think they're, they're a bit insecure and they're maybe... In, I not think wanting they f- to enter that world just yet. Yeah, I think they they fear the idea of going with a PT and feeling how unfit they are. Yeah. Maybe and that's why. Yeah. They're like, oh, they'll expect me to be really fit. Well, when actually our goal is to work with you to get you to that level of fitness. Absolutely. Or that level of strength or whatever your goal is. We've that's got literally no, our job. We don't expect anything from anybody that comes through that no. door. We're happy to get a client, to be perfectly honest with you, and yeah. someone that wants to work with us. And if you're a total beginner, then that's where we work from. If you're an intermediate, then we work from there. Yeah. If you're if you're already strong at certain things, then great, we'll work from there. T- to be honest with you, for me, I, I never care really as long as the person's got a good attitude. Where, what you can do, well, where your starting point is, you learn a lot from me. that first session as well, don't you, with someone. Yeah, and you you gauge that level of fitness, and you kind of adapt to them. Yeah, the first session I could I probably say would be a bit terrifying for a lot of people if they're unfit and they're like, oh god, what's going to happen? But that, the goal of the first session, I don't know about you, Barry, probably the same, but you learn about your client and you go, okay, well, can't manage that, can't manage that. That's probably where their fitness levels are. That's where their strength levels are, and then from there, you're progressing them back up, right? Hundred percent. And I I actually really work enjoy working with uh, people that don't have a lot of experience in the gym because you know i feel like i can teach them so much yeah exactly you know I mean? yes yeah, we, st- we can start really basic and build it up and there's 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 a lot there's a lot to cover so you know if you if that's you don't be scared get in touch yeah get involved and why not you're kidding yourself you're you, you, you ain't going to get back in touch when you're fit you're, yeah. you're going to be like wait i got fit on my own i don't need them yeah exactly what a waste yeah <laughs> good one next deadlifts are bad for your back Oh, that's 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 like swearing I've, at you. I've heard it a lot, to be fair. Yeah, so it is a common one, but mm, maybe less so these days. But I remember a couple of years ago, I used to hear it all the time, oh, I can't deadlift, you know, bad for my back. When it's not really, is it? It's, no. It's a strengthening exercise for your back. Like if you're doing it with like poor positioning, poor technique, like any movement, that's going to be bad for your back or bad for your shoulders if you bench wrong, right? But it's about learning the technique, learning the position, and then learning the movement as well. And then also not being an idiot. If you're maxing out and going way mm-hmm. too heavy all the time, your spine's bent over, flex while you're lifting, and you're not holding like a rigid spine, and yeah. If, if you want to have a strong back, right? If you want to have a healthy spine, a strong back, uh, you know, a strong body, strong joints... A healthy body get yourself into the gym and start lifting weights and get Smaller. into resistance training right and that goes for a, a lot of exercises um, and yeah. a deadlift is is a fantastic exercise to put into your program if you do it correctly if you get taught correctly how to lift the weight from the floor you're utilizing a lot of muscle muscles joints it it's a fantastic exercise that can only help improve the strength of your back if you do it right. And it's a movement you'll do every day, right? You're picking things up from the ground. You're going to exactly. do it all the time. So exactly. being good at that's a great thing. Exactly. Like, for example, I'll use my my parents as an, as an example. They're, they're getting quite old. They're in their 70s and 
they're, they've got a dog who is getting get old as well. Um, he's on his last legs and they struggle to lift him into the boot of the car. Yeah. And like, but they've got to do it because, you know, they don't have any anyone there to to help them unless I'm there, which I'll, I'll do it for them. Right. Um, but you're not so, always there, are you, Barry? No, I'm not. No. <laughs> Well, they live in Perth, so they're a wee bit, a wee bit yeah. far away. Barry, can you pop down and lift the dog up again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. Yeah, um, but they're basically going down in a deadlift position, you know, a slightly rounded posture and having to lift this dog into into, into the boot. And they struggle They struggle with it. Um, and if they, if, they, if they had done a little bit more strength training, maybe they would be better equipped for it. God, Barry's calling out his parents right now. Well, it's called cool, like, well you should have I'll call you it should have. <laughs> to be fair my mum she does go to the gym and she and she works pretty hard and she she goes to a lot of different classes and does, does your does your dad go to the gym no neither does mine no my mum goes to the gym as well my dad I'd got him in for a session once and to be fair it annoyed me because this guy he sat over a desk his whole life he's got quite an arch sort of posture these days and he was he actually moved really well I brought him in thinking oh it's a natural. yeah let's see it let's see this let's see how he moves I was like oh it's actually quite good. <laughs> well, the, the annoying thing about my dad is, you know, you've been out to Granada to the to the villa. I have, right? yeah, yeah. Um, where we do the fitness retreats. Um, well, I took my I took my family out there, and we, we we went on a bit of a hill climb up the hill. And my mum's like, "Oh, your dad's just not going to be able to do this. You, you know, I don't think he should go. He doesn't do any exercise. It's going to be tough on him. You know, blah blah blah." Yeah. Mum goes to the gym, etc. I was like, I was like, well. We'll see how it goes. I'm sure they'll be fine. It's not not that. It was only it was only a partial. Climb. I know. I know where you're going. Yeah, yeah. Forty minutes. That's what you do. The boot camp at the top, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know exactly. It's where you still are. quite yeah, yeah. hard though, on, on the last little bit. Yeah, it's a steep. Anyway, my my dad was soaring away. He was up there, no bother. My my mum was 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 <laughs> way back, <laughs> way back, oh, keel, keeled over, struggling <laughs> where we're breathing like twenty minutes up. She, so. she called him out. She called him out, and he was he, <laughs> he was, was like, fine. doesn't do any exercise. Yeah, to be fair, my dad's very fit. He does a is a five k run every second day, every second day, no matter where he is in the world, he'll do a five k run. Well, that's brilliant, mate. I know. Yeah, he plays football to this day. Sixty six no. years old, still going you're, strong. You're doing your dad a bit in of his West Ham service. I know, yeah, but he's he he is postural is not great, Barry. He's a bit of a bit of a hedgehog. Yeah, but he's scared hedgehog. He's vibes. keeping himself fit. He's doing. He's doing. I know. I I tell him to keep well, keep not going. Competitive sport, but he's playing some sport as well. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. He wants to quit. I keep telling him not to keep playing football. Get that West Ham top back on. Get yeah. out of there. <laughs> he could have been playing last week. Oh God! Yeah, on the on the pitch. Can't yeah. make his year. Right, Matthew, hit, me, hit us with another one. We've got, it's, it's a weird one to be fair. You don't hear it massively these days, but muscle turning into fat and fat turning into muscle. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously they're two separate things. Uh, a muscle can't directly just convert into fat and fat can't directly convert into muscle. Muscle is quite complex tissue, you know? <laughs> you can't just turn fat into it. Um, it doesn't really work like that. Yeah, I mean, like we just already touched on the point as we're getting older, our muscle is at atrophy right it's, yeah yeah it's, it's the opposite from hypertrophy it's it's decreasing right yeah you get a point over yeah, time we'll so you know obviously if we don't use it we lose it and we're wanting to you know maintain as much muscle muscle mass as we possibly can through our training and yeah, through our through our diet and obviously if you are carrying a lot of fat um and your goal is to reduce it that's great you're not necessarily going to you're not turning that fat into muscle and you're not Turn no, they're two separate fat. things. No. They're two separate things. You can lose fat and gain muscle. Of course you can. But yeah. you're not turning that fat directly into muscle. It's a bit different, yeah. Yeah. I don't need to train my legs. They're already strong. I love this one. I love this one. And it's guys. Guys sit down with you and you go, yeah, so it's not really my legs. My legs are strong. So I need to work on my upper body. And you're like, well, yeah. Your legs are meant, like your quad's massive. It's a big muscle. It's meant to be stronger than your bicep. <laughs> so what, what like, you, oh, I, I, you know, I, I play football, so I train my legs. Uh, not really. <laughs> yeah. Not really the same thing. <laughs> I know, I know. So so you're you're actually taking offense to people that want to come to the gym and only train their upper body. That's what, that's, this is not a gym to myth. To be fair, this, we've both done that. This is a pet peeve. It's a pet peeve, to be fair, more than a gym myth. Yeah, um, but, but we both done that. I used to be really bad at training legs. I was really bad. I I, I can sympathise a little bit with with those. That play. <laughs> sympathise, yeah, All right, boys. I've got you. Come in for a hug. 
because I I played football when I first started the gym and things like that, and I was a bit like that. I was like, I, I I don't need to train my legs because I play football and do so much running and stuff like that, and I'll really focus on upper body. But I think it's because you know you're you're a bit scared. You don't want to like decrease your performance yeah. when you're when you're playing because you've got sore legs from training. Yeah, you but know? I think it's probably I get, also like I get a... that that people think like that, but you you also have to get through that and also know that your body adapts very very quickly. And if you if you train your legs at the right volume at the right times, yeah, you, you will improve your performance. You won't de- you won't decrease it, you know, um, and not not to fear fear training your legs. And if if you're doing a sport where your legs are the main tools. I would say you have, you have to you have to look after them. You have to yeah, keep them strong, keep them supple, keep the joints in good condition. You, you'll reduce your risk of injury. You'll inc- inc- improve your performance. And who wants to be the guy that's got a, a massive or a developed upper body with a skinny little chicken leg? You know, yeah, it's not a good look. But I think a lot of it is also there is the the argument of they obviously don't want to tire their legs out. And I've spoken to footballers in the past. I'm like, so why don't you spread out your leg training over the whole week? Rather than doing a leg day, you do a leg exercise a day. And just spread that out. So you don't hit that fatigue. So you can still do your training and play your matches on the weekend and all that sort of stuff. But I think a lot of it also comes from people coming in and maybe they have a lot of insecurity about their upper body. They're insecure about how their upper body looks and they really yeah. want to develop that as much as possible. But I, as you said, you want a well-developed physique if you're walking about with massive shoulders massive arms and you've got tiny legs you look a bit weird <laughs> you look a bit odd like an upside down dorito uh it's not not a fantastic look but if you want to get strong and and also develop your core strength as well then you know introducing lower body exercises is, is going to help you do that big time um i know that when i introduced squats and deadlifts and exercises like that into my training for the first time a lot of my strength in my upper body uh, sessions increased as well as a sort of um, side effect, so so to speak. So, but I don't see that as being much of a gym myth. It's more just a Matthew pet peeve. You as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't don't push it on me. But train train everything, guys. Train everything. All right. You you can obviously target certain areas you want to improve more, but I wouldn't say neglect anything. So if you want to work on your shoulders more, you can train your shoulders more. But you I think if you, if, you want to, if you don't want to steer clear of injury and have a healthy lower back and things like that, then, you know, yeah. train train your whole body because you'll end up doing five days of upper body work and you might end up with a bit of a shoulder issue and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the next one's a good one. Must do cardio for weight loss. You must do cardio. But to be fair, whenever I've lost weight or got lean, sorry, um, I've not really done much cardio. If you had to say, right, what is the main thing that's ever helped you lose weight or, or like you know think of all the times that you've lost weight so that's probably like what once <laughs> <laughs> i used to be very lean barry have you know i've done it a few times what if you had to say what was that one thing that that helped you get there what diet was, yeah it's always it, it, a diet, diet. and then prioritizing protein protein based meals cooking yourself and just diet mm-hmm. and the, the rest will fall into place and then i just steps just go out and do a couple steps I've never done cardio to get lean ever, and I've probably, uh, probably hit about like ten percent body fat, let's say. But yeah. if you want to get crazy lean, like stupid lean, you'll see bodybuilders will put it in, etc. And this is mainly because the the options are either you eat less or you do more cardio. You know what I mean? So you can either reduce your calories by another two hundred or do two hundred calories of cardio. But it's a lot easier to take it from the the food, isn't it? Oh, hundred percent. 100%. They only put it in because they kind of, I would say they have to, because otherwise they're eating nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for general weight loss, you want to tone up, look great. You don't need to chuck in a load of cardio. Staying active, maybe a little bit if you want to, but you don't have to. If I think of the first couple of times I got myself really, really lean, I don't think I was even doing that many steps, if I'm honest. No, no not I, at all. I was focusing a lot on my diet. And I was doing, you know, my weight training and I, I did virtually no cardio. Um, and then I th- if I think of like more recent times, I've, you know, I've focused a lot more on my, my steps and tracking my steps. When I say I wasn't focused on my steps, I probably just didn't know what I was doing. I might have been doing a lot to of steps. To be fair, you, when, when, we, when did you compete again? I don't know. A, long, like a long time 10 ago. 10 years ago? A long time ago. But, but then the, the whole step thing and knee, et cetera, wasn't a massive thing, what, 10 years ago, was it? 
that's the last couple, like five, you mean six years. B- being aware of it and yeah, tra- yeah, and tra- counting and steps, like, yeah. etc., was not massive back then. When I first got into PT, etc., it wasn't one of the things you f- you focus on with people. But it was probably something that was naturally quite high. But I just wasn't aware of it. Yeah, yeah, probably. I was, yeah, yeah. Obviously, as a PT, you do a lot of steps in the gym. Um, but yeah, if I think about that time when I uh, did compete, then the diet was if i had to put it as a percentage i would put the the diet was like 70 to 80 percent you know what i mean yeah, yeah it's of, got to of be. how i got there you know yeah yeah 100%. just you know making sure that i was in a sensible calorie deficit and over time you know you I know bet, maybe, maybe i bet you were so that. bro as well i bet you were eating chicken and rice no i wasn't broccoli by the stem seeing it raw I was eating like quite a lot of like bread and things like that, things that you would probably wouldn't as- associate with that type of diet. Yeah, um, yeah, tomato sauce. I, I've I've probably still got a lot of it written down or in in, <laughs> in a spreadsheet. You should somewhere. get it out. You should get out. Yeah, we'll go through that in an episode. Just rip apart his old diet. I, see how good it was. I did use cardio towards the last few weeks because I was panicking a little bit that I wasn't going to be lean enough to stand on stage and. Uh, beside other other bodybuilders and i'd never done it before so i was i did introduce yeah, a little bit of, bit of cardio to try and get those that little bit extra weight off yeah probably worked but you know as a method for weight loss it was it, I, it, at that time it was actually quite brutal well you know? what were you doing what was your cardio well i'm adding cardio into you know my routine where i'm you know low on calories and i'm you training know, quite a lot what did you do oh what did i do what's your go-to you run it. Yeah, I got up in the morning, first thing, put my trainers on, obviously put some clothes on. And, yeah, that's a good uh, idea. <laughs> just just battery in his boxes run around. I would me. just run down to the local park and you know Victoria do you know Victoria? Yeah, park? of course not, but yeah. So I would run down there and I would, first thing in the morning and I would just run round there until I was knackered and run home. <laughs> Didn't even track it. Was it a certain amount of time? I mean, was it a certain distance? Just run around till you well, can't be bothered anymore. No, the, the first off. the first couple of times I'd run maybe twice around the park, run home. Then I would be like, right, I'll run three times this time around the park. Yeah. Then four times, and then eventually after like four or five times, you're getting pretty bored. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can imagine. Um, what time? What time in the morning was it? Just not like, that it matters. I'm just I'm just genuinely curious. Like, well, this it wasn't dark because it was it was summer summer months or it, it was it was lighter months but i don't know six six thirty six o'clock oh okay yeah six, fair. probably six o'clock i'm not getting up any earlier than that so, so this is why you never did bodybuilding ever again <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is why you instantly quit after the first show i like yeah, how, i like again. how i did one bodybuilding show and yet everybody keeps asking me about it it's, it's like it's lived with you for all these years i mean i'm i am definitely not a bodybuilder like yeah, <laughs> but you look so well. I'm sorry, Barry. You look so fantastic. I mean, you should be a bodybuilder, surely. Thanks very much. You're welcome, mate. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Do we have any more gym myths, or is we've that got? Us? Well, we kind of got one more. Like you, people usually say, you know, they're doing weight training, or I'm not losing weight because I'm gaining so much muscle mass at the same time. Ah, okay. Which it has it has its arguments, but ideally, like you can lose if you're in a 500 calorie deficit you should be losing more weight than you gain in muscle mass. Yeah. So on average, your weight probably should go down the way so if what, you're efficient. So what you're saying is people are they're just talking bullshit and they're not actually being uh, truthful to oh, themselves. Oh, that's a hard one. That's, is that what you're saying? You, you push me into a corner here, Barry. You push me into a corner. But I have had it when people come to you and you go, oh, like my weight's up, it's up a kilogram, but obviously I'm, I put on muscle mass because of all the weights I'm doing. You're kind of going, uh, yeah. I guess, but ideally your weight should still be coming down. On an average, you might have fluctuation week to week, day to day, whatever, but on an average, your weight should come down the way. Yeah, because I, I know when you're consistent, really consistent, and you're, and, you, and you're going through a period where you're right on it, your weight, your weight comes down. Yeah, period. It, 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 it does. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's exceptions, I get that, and I know, I know people are shouting right now at the... At, out, at the, what, yeah, at the radio. There's a, there's a lot of, <laughs> We're not on the radio. <laughs> there's a lot of variation and there's a lot of, there's arguments. For, but the best way to put it is you can, you can lose a pound to two pounds a week, right, of body fat. Ideally, that's with a 500 calorie deficit. And if you're doing weight training and you're doing really well, as a natural, you're probably gaining, what, a pound of muscle a month? So that the, kind the of puts way it in off, pers- perspective. Yeah, the it? way off, you should probably be losing weight, but you have arguments like, for example, like time of the month or overall yeah. water retention or what you've eaten that day and whatever. Exactly. So 
there is, you should also not the exception is don't solely focus on the scales yeah yeah don't yeah you got you know, measurements like right. you said there water retention can make it look like you've not made any progress when you actually when have. you have yeah and um you know that's why i would always recommend weigh yourself take some measurements measurements and uh, aren't really going to uh going to lie to you and they're going to be a good thing to track your progress alongside the weight but as well as that take photos yeah, yeah spot on photos three are great, fantastic three great ways to track your progress uh and you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket yeah all right barry i've got a question for you Oh my and I'm, I'm throwing God, him in. I'm throwing him in. It's so nothing to do with gym myths, but when we were in Lisbon, me and my mates, um, I don't. This is quite sad. We did a quiz one night for a bit of fun. I'm really, really, drinks, really, really quiz, scared. Right? There, what you're going to ask me? No, it's just a, it's a, a general question. So, w- what body part doesn't grow from birth? From birth to you now, it's been the same same size. hasn't hasn't changed. <laughs> you go on. Okay, what do you I, think? I've got a question for you after this. Okay, no, you've just. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what what doesn't grow from birth that's the same size? Okay, you get one guess and I'll tell you. I got it right. I got a point for this one. Oh, I feel like I need to hurry up because people are like switching just, off. Just pick something, yeah? Go on. Pick something. What do you think? Oh God, he's really thinking now. I, I, can't, I can't think. What, you mean you're tiny when you're, a, when you're a baby? Yeah, yeah, you're tiny when you're a baby. There's something that doesn't grow your whole life. Okay, this is this, this might not. I think this is wrong, but I'm going to say you, your eyeball. You're spot on. You're joking. Yeah, yeah. Your eyes. Yeah. You're joking. That's why babies are so cute because they got such big eyes for their small little heads. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was trying to think like you know of my boys you when they were when, on, they were when yeah. they were a baby. Right. What is the? I might be more. And there's two parts oh, of your body, God. right? Yeah, yeah. Go on. Right. I, I hope I'm right with this. That never stop growing. Oh, never stop growing. Never stop growing. What are they? Two parts of your body. I think. I don't are they? Are, are <laughs> they making this up? Muscular slash skeletal. Um. Because otherwise, I'm gonna start saying like. Because your hair always grows. Yeah, it's na- not your hair, right? So and your nails always grow. It's not your. It's okay. That that that's what some people said to me when I came came at them with this, but because yeah, yeah. uh, that that, but seemingly you know. Obviously, hair can stop. You can you can go bald. Not for for some people, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not. Oh, that's a hard one. Grow your entire life. Yeah. Um, nails is probably nails is probably in there as well, actually. But this, that's not my answer. That's not your answer. Is it like skeletal slash muscular? Is that is that? I'm not of, giving you any clues. Oh, I need a clue, otherwise I'm just going to stick with nails. <laughs> what continually grows your whole life? Um, I don't know. Your femur. No. I'm, I'm always getting taller. I was six foot yesterday. Now I'm six foot nine. I'm, your, go on, tell me. Your nose. Your nose grows your whole life. Yeah, but don't, guys, don't, don't quote me on this, right? Don't, this <laughs> could be absolute out, garbage. Out. This could be absolute garbage. All right, my nose is I don't know where I've read this. This is just something that, that me and the kids were, were, were talking about. Yeah. So blame my kids and your ear lobes or your ears. My ears have been growing my whole life. I don't think they stop growing. They're always growing. So that means look one at old no. people. They've got massive earlobes. They're like dangling down on the floor. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. I'll have to look it up. I'll have to fact check you on this. <laughs> Nose and your ear. So they were body parts, not like your hair. I don't even care if it's not true. I've spent yeah, three no, and a half minutes made thinking about it. Everyone start googling. Yeah, ears and nose. Ears and growing. nose. Always um, growing. Go and look at your, the, but, your oldest person in your family. Right. Yeah. Have they got a mobile phone? Have they got a mobile phone? Yeah. Yeah. Get them to send you a selfie. Okay. I'm gonna me- and then go and I've look at go, old pictures. I've got to go message my dad after this and go, Oi, show me your ears. And then look at an old picture. Yeah. Show me your ears now. Yep. And then show me your ears. Your dad's years the ago. oldest person in your family. Uh, these days, yeah. No, actually, Him or actually sure. my Uncle Kev. That, yeah, that, my that, Uncle that Kev's would. quite old. Uncle Shout out to Uncle Kev. Always gets me West Ham tickets. What a guy. Probably doesn't listen to this podcast at all, but... Shut we might up. actually get listed in West Ham podcast the amount of times you've mentioned West Ham. Yeah, that's probably like four times this episode. Sorry. I'll never talk about them ever again. On that note, guys, we're hitting the 45 minute mark. Yeah. And to be fair, we're also at a thousand downloads. So keep, keep we listening. Have, yeah. Thank you for reminding us that, yeah, Matthew. Yeah. We've hit a thousand downloads. 
And we can only say thank you to everybody who continues to tune in and give us positive and constructive feedback. Yeah, um, we appreciate it. It's been fantastic. And I love getting feedback. People messaging and small little comments here and there have been great. So I think people are enjoying it. I hope, hope you're going to keep listening. And yeah. um, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Starting Monday podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to follow us and share with your friends. Have a great day. And see you at the next episode.